There's a moment just before a predator starts to hunt. When time seems to stop. And then... Chaos. This young leopard has made her first kill in three days. But even though this hyena has stolen her kill, it's not the villain here. Stick around and I'll show you why. I'm Jules. As a wildlife cameraman, I've spent years following and filming animals. I've learned a few things along the way, and I want to share some of my adventures with you. In this series, we're looking at predators. Lions, leopard, cheetah, wild dogs, they're all family favorites. But there's one predator that always gets a bad rap, and it really bugs me. So today I'm going to answer the question, how dangerous are predators? And I'm going to show you why hyenas are not the baddies Hollywood has betrayed them to be. Let's go. The nature of the beast is a phrase usually used to describe things being just the way they are. And it's usually negative. There's traffic in the city. That's the nature of the beast. Your smartphone won't connect to the Wi-Fi. That's the nature of the beast. But in this series, we're spotlighting the nature of these beautiful but complex beasts. We're revealing their secrets and acknowledging their struggles. Showing that being a beast isn't a bad thing. Today, I'll show you why this hyena snagging a kill from a leopard doesn't make him the bad guy. In fact, it's actually pretty heroic. Now, I won't name any names, but in some movies, hyenas are portrayed as ugly, evil scavengers. That's not fair. They can be cute, they're definitely not evil, and they're predators in their own right. In fact, in some places, lions are more likely to scavenge from hyenas than the other way around. But before we talk about how great hyenas are, let's set the scene and show you some of the other predators hyenas have to contend with. I'm taking you to one of my favorite places on earth, South Langua National Park. Now, I know I've got a Kiwi accent and you probably haven't heard of this place, but we'll be spending a lot of time here. So say it with me, South Luangwa National Park. Got it? Let's go. It's a massive wilderness covering a huge area, but the main action happens around the river. The Luangwa flows roughly north to south, and in the dry season, it's one of the few water sources for miles around. The river is absolutely full of crocodiles and hippo. And there's one of the highest concentrations of predators here, anywhere in the world. Carnivores get a lot of their water from blood, but herbivores have to drink, and that means going to the river. It's a tricky balance, you have to weigh up being thirsty with the potential of being eaten. Because all the prey animals come to the river, all the predators do too. Animals like these impala have to keep an eye out. In the water, there are crocodiles, and all around, predators are lurking. We'll follow this impala as it leaves the river and heads to the grassy floodplains where it likes to feed. As it leaves the river, the first predator it's going to encounter is probably going to be lions, lying in the shade along the riverside. Lions are most people's favorite. King of the jungle, heir to all the light touches. They're the largest predators here, and there's a lot of them. In some days filming, I've seen 30 lions. Lions love the shade. In the dry season, it's hot, real hot. So they rest up during the day and conserve their energy. One of the questions people often ask me is whether it's dangerous to film lions. If you're in a vehicle, you're actually pretty safe. It's a weird thought, I know, but they just kind of see the outline of the car and don't seem to notice you're inside. Mostly this works to your advantage and you're able to film without affecting them. But sometimes they get too comfortable. And if there's no shade around, you might find you have a lion sleeping in the shadow of your vehicle. And my filming truck doesn't have any doors, so it can be pretty unnerving having a snoring lion just a couple of feet away. Lions are opportunists, which means that if something wanders into their field of view, they'll probably have a go at it. Otherwise, they rest up, sometimes for days, and conserve their energy until they're hungry. And then, it's time to hunt. Lions are ambush hunters. Different prides have different hunting strategies. I've seen prides which specialize in bringing down large animals like buffalo, 
and those which prefer taking out smaller prey like Warthog. They tend to stalk and surprise their prey with a short burst of speed. At top speed, they can hit 80 kilometers an hour, which is about 50 miles, but they can't keep it up for long. So if an Impala can get a head start, they'll probably make it out alive. For prey animals, being alert to your surroundings is key to staying alive. It's what keeps you from being surprised. But being alert all the time is actually really costly to animals. Imagine keeping your head up, looking around, ears triggering at the smallest sound. It means you have less time for eating and for resting. And all that stress has got to be bad for you. But if it means not being eaten, I'll take alert and alive over chilled and dinner any day of the week. So our Impala has made it past the lines and onto the floodplain, but they've still got one of the most successful predators to deal with. Wild dogs. These aren't your regular pet pooch. They share a common ancestor with wolves. Wild dogs live in family groups called packs. When it comes to hunting, these guys are not ambush hunters. They run out into the open and start the chase. Dogs are a lot smaller than lions, but they've got endurance and cooperation on their side. As a team, they can kill prey many times their own size and run down animals over long distances. Whoa, 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 let's just pump the brakes here a minute because I want to tell you how difficult it is to film wild dogs. When they're hunting, they can move at over 40 miles an hour, so following them is really tough. You have to predict where they're going to be, grab a shot, then drive like crazy through the bush, dodging trees and holes, trying to get in front of them and figure out which impala they're targeting. It makes them one of the most frustrating but also the most exciting animals in the world to film. For Impala running away from dogs, it's not about being the fastest. It's about not being the slowest. Watching a kill is one of the most emotional parts of the job. It's nature at its most raw. It can be pretty gruesome to watch, and even though I've seen it a bunch of times, trust me, it never gets any easier. You just have to try and remember, it's what predators were born to do. And hey, we've all got to eat. People have this mistaken idea that predators are going to eat you as soon as you set foot in Africa. And that's just not true. They haven't evolved to see people as food. So as long as you don't catch them on a bad day, or in the wrong place at the wrong time, you're totally fine. If you're in an Impala, well, that's another story. But for now, our Impala has dodged the dogs and has made it into the shade of a sausage tree. They love eating the flowers of this beautiful tree, which dropped to the ground below. Everything does. These are great trees. They provide food for so many animals. They give good shade, but you have to watch out for the giant fruits, which fall without warning and are heavy enough to kill you. On one of my first shoots, I was just so tired, I just plonked my mattress down under a sausage tree and went straight to sleep. A few moments later, a huge pod like a bowling ball landed about this far from my head. I moved after that. <laughs> so our Impala is getting a belly full of flowers. But this is a story about predators, remember? And when you're a prey species like Impala, danger lurks around every corner. In the branches above, the stealthiest of predators, a leopard, is lying in wait. In most places, leopards are really hard to spot. Get it? But not here. The Loangwa is one of the best places in the world to see leopards. Along the river, there's nearly one leopard for every two kilometers. So here's this leopard in the tree. The Impala's on the ground and I'm waiting, camera poised, for the leopard to jump out of the tree and pounce on this easy meal. But here's the thing. Predators are not killing machines. Sometimes you'll sit for hours waiting. The Impalas arrive, they feed, they leave, and the leopard just sits there. It's so frustrating. Being a deadly predator is all about balance. You have to decide, am I hungry enough to take a stab at this potentially dangerous, quite large, feisty antelope with sharp horns and a lethal kick? Or do I wait for an easier opportunity? If a leopard is injured, they could starve to death. So it's important they make the right call. Leopards are also one of the most adaptable predators on the planet so they can change their tactics and go for an even more stealthy approach. In the middle of this floodplain, there's a gully. It's perfect cover for a sneak attack, if you know how to use it.
the leopard waits till the final moment to make its attack. Success! But she's been followed. And here's our final character, a hyena, doing what hyenas are best known for, scavenging or stealing. And it's true, they do steal from other carnivores. But portraying them as thieves is only one way of looking at it. Nature is more complex than some movies and many documentaries would have you believe. Hyenas are usually seen as the bad guy here, but what about them? They might not have eaten in days. It's not like there's a grocery store where they can just pick up dinner. And it's pretty hardcore to steal food from an angry leopard. I think that says more about their courage than it does about their character. It's also only part of the story. Hyenas are actually really good at hunting food for themselves. I don't buy into this view of hyenas as dirty, disgusting, evil creatures. I've spent months living among them while filming, and I've come to learn they're one of the most interesting and most misunderstood predators on the planet. They're powerful, they're curious, cooperative, and totally hardcore. They're incredibly social, very complex, and full of personality. So hopefully you can see that predators are far more complex than we give them credit, and they're not as dangerous to people as you might think. And hyenas? Well, there's more to hyenas than Hollywood would have you believe. Over the next few episodes, I'm going to share my experiences following and filming hyenas. I'll show you why I love them, and if you don't already, I'm hoping you'll learn to love them too. Next time, I'll be answering some difficult questions about hyenas, like why do they laugh? and dispelling a few myths along the way. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Stay wild. Thieves, scavengers, killers. That's what a lot of people think of when they see hyenas. But that's not the real story. This hyena is actually just a mum with hungry babies at home that she needs to feed. And look at these adorable little guys. How can you not love them? Hey team, welcome to another video. If it's your first time here, I'm Jules. As a wildlife cameraman, I've followed and filmed animals across the globe. Now I'm sharing some of my adventures with you. Today we're following the journey of a hyena mum as she heads home to feed her young cubs, and we're busting some of the myths that surround hyenas along the way. I'll show you why everything you thought you knew about hyenas might be a lie. Let's go. The Lion King cartoon brought the wilds of Africa to the world. I grew up in the 90s, and I know for me it was part of the reason I made filming wildlife my life's work. For many people it was their first introduction to a land filled with giraffe, elephant, and yes, adorable singing lion cubs. But it also gave hyenas a really bad reputation. One that's lasted over 25 years. The thing is, movies need goodies and baddies. More on that later. And hyenas? Well, they drew the short straw. In this series, we're telling the hyenas' side of the story and showing them in a different light. Today, we'll follow the journey of a mother hyena on her way back to the den to feed her hungry babies. Hyenas live in family groups called clans. Their homes are called dens. This one is adapted from an old termite mound. I filmed hyenas using this den since 2013, and they're still living there. Cubs like this little guy are black for the first few weeks of their lives, and only develop their characteristic spots as they grow. When they're little like this, they're super cute. They start off timid, but they quickly become curious, and a little pushy at times. They grow quickly, so their mum needs to make sure her milk is as nutritious as possible. The clan's territory is along the river, in the Ensefu sector of South Luangwa National Park. It's full of dangers. Crocodiles in the water, and rival predators all around. Even the giraffe out here can kill you. Right now, Mum is up north, far away from the den, looking for food. It's quiet now, but it's been a violent morning.
Lions have killed buffalo. With full bellies, they're resting in the shade nearby. And here's a familiar sight. Hyenas scavenging. It's what they're best known for. But it's not the whole story. This time it was the lions that made this kill. But hyenas are fully capable of making their own kills. And lions are actually just as likely to steal from hyenas as the other way around. Hyena society is dominated by hierarchy. Although this is a family group, when it comes to food, they'll fight, like me and my sisters used to over Cocoa Pops. <laughs> Mothers have to work especially hard to get the best, most nutrient-rich food they can, so they can pass all that good stuff on to their cubs. But right now, the lions want their kill back. And this is the sound that hyenas are most known for. Their laugh. One of their names is actually laughing hyenas. But there's nothing funny here. A hyena laugh or giggle is actually a sign of stress or excitement. This sound effect is put over the top of hyenas doing all kinds of things. Getting ready to hunt. Planning a lion cub's demise. People think they're laughing like a cartoon villain while he plots to kill the hero. <laughs> But that's one of the biggest myths about hyenas. I see a hyena's laugh as a kind of, hey, 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 leave me alone. Like when a bunch of clan members gang up on you. Or a 250 pound angry lion is trying to rip your head off. A full clan of hyenas will give lions a run for their money. But a small group like this are no match for them. So mum will have to find another meal as she heads back to the den. And a journey through a wilderness like this won't be easy. South Langwa is an incredible place, filled with all the wonder and beauty you'd expect from Africa. For me, being right in nature like this makes me feel alive. Everywhere you look there's something to see, and every corner you turn could lead to an adventure. For our hyena, it's just the same. Although hyenas are good hunters, mum is no match for these giraffe. She's just being curious. Giraffes can weigh over a ton and have a kick that would knock your head off. So mum continues the journey down the river. The river runs roughly north to south and forms the boundary to her territory. Hyenas can cross the water when it's low like this, but there are a lot, I mean a lot of crocodiles, so it's mostly not worth it. A young hippo has died. Hundreds of crocodiles arrive to feast on the carcass. Now I know for a lot of you this is pretty full on to watch. And honestly, when I'm filming it, I feel the same. But this is real nature here. And it's all part of the circle of life. The best view is from in the river. So sometimes I'll drive my vehicle into the water to get a croc's eye view of the action. It's a pretty crazy experience to be sitting in a river surrounded by huge crocodiles tearing a carcass to pieces. Sometimes carcasses will wash up on the shore and then all kinds of animals will take advantage of the feast. Like this pride of lions, who are so full they can't even be bothered getting up as our hyena mum walks past. Hyenas and lions are natural enemies, but animals don't like conflict. It's super risky. So if there's no food to fight over or young to protect, it's worth picking your battles. It's something I'm learning too. Whose turn is it to cook dinner tonight? It's getting hot now, and the temperature is soaring. Predators tend to be more active at night. They've got good nocturnal vision, which gives them an advantage, but I think it's also because the amount of energy they have to exert to bring down prey during the day is extreme. Imagine doing a full body workout in a sauna and you've got some idea, some idea of what it's like out here. So in the heat of the day, it's worth finding a nice shady spot to rest or cool off in the water pools which form in the riverbed. It's also the time when lots of animals go to drink. Large herds like these buffalo will mostly drink at the river, but there are smaller water holes which become more like mud pools as the dry season takes its toll. Mud's also a really good way for herbivores to get rid of pests and parasites. Imagine being covered in flies and biting insects, 
but not having any arms or hands to scratch the itch. That's what it's like for herbivores. Covering themselves in mud is actually really soothing and a great way to remove parasites. Letting it dry is like a face mask for buffalo, but instead of clearing your pores, it lifts away some of the ticks in those hard to reach places. I've actually hopped into one of these mud pools before. It was really relaxing, except for all the slimy things wriggling around under my feet. That was pretty gross. Unfortunately, the mud is thick, and sometimes buffalo that are weakened by the heat or by starvation get trapped. The herd leaves, but the buffalo is stuck fast. The more she struggles, the more she sinks. As the afternoon wears on, the buffalo stops struggling and vultures gather in the skies. Most vultures need other animals to open up the carcass before they can start feeding, so hyenas are super helpful. Vultures and hyenas often go together, like peanut butter and cheese on toast. No? <laughs> hyenas have an uncanny ability to find food. Whether it's hearing the sounds of an animal in distress from kilometers away, or their incredible sense of smell that leads them to food, they're first on the scene more often than not. And scientists have shown that hyenas can use the sight of vultures circling in the sky to pinpoint the position of carcasses and lead them straight to an easy meal. So vultures are really important to hyenas too. When I'm filming and looking for predators, I take a leaf out of the hyenas book and also use vultures as a sign that predators might be nearby. We can learn a lot from animals. Because they're mostly nocturnal, it's been hard to film hyenas hunting. But now that we have thermal cameras, we're able to see what animals get up to in the dead of night. As the sun sets, mum and other members of the clan arrive and put the buffalo out of its misery. It seems brutal, I know, but if lions had found it first, they'd have done the same. Predators eat prey, it's what they were born to do. The hyenas feed quietly without their characteristic whoops. They don't want the lions showing up and stealing their meal. People sometimes ask why I don't intervene when animals get stuck like this. It may seem harsh, but for me, I'm there to document what animals naturally do in the wild. And as far as possible, I want to make sure I'm not changing anything. So if what happened to them is natural, I don't step in. But what if I did, and I pulled the buffalo out? What about the hyenas? They've got cubs back at the den to feed. Would you rob them of a meal? Hyenas are unusual in that they're able to exploit much more of a carcass than other predators. With a bite twice as strong as a dog, they're one of the few animals that can crush bones. That's right, crush bones with their mouths and digest it. Often they have so much calcium in their diet, their poop actually turns white. When they leave, the vultures can step in and clean up the carcass. Things get pretty chaotic. So our hyena mum heads back to the den, belly full and ready to feed her hungry youngsters. Now you've seen they're not just scavengers, but on TV it's what we see them doing most of the time. And I think that's why people have this view of them as thieves. You guys already know, or are starting to understand, that they're far more complicated than we give them credit for. But there are a lot of people out there who think that hyenas are just straight evil. There are plenty of superstitions around hyenas among indigenous communities, and the reasons for these are very complex. But for most people, it's TV and movies that have sold them the lie that lions are the good guys and hyenas are the bad guys. And that's not the truth. But Hollywood's not the only ones reinforcing this myth. The reality with the films we make as wildlife producers is that we need goodies and baddies for stories to work. And the way we create films makes a difference to how you as the audience interpret wildlife behavior. I'm doing it right now, and I'll show you what I mean. Here's the setup. Our hyena is nearly home but she's encountered a final challenge. There are a couple of ways this could play out on screen. These wild dogs are wearing research collars, so scientists can track the movements of the pack. With less than 5,000 in the wild, every dog counts. A hyena is a threat to the pack's young. The pack must chase this intruder off and teach her a lesson she won't forget. So the hyena's the bad guy, right? Let's watch it again. 
Her young cubs are waiting back at the den. Without their mother, they won't survive. Alone, she hasn't got a chance against a pack of wild dogs. If they catch her, they'll attack and could even kill her. She needs to run. So you see, it's all in the presentation. And the reality of filmmaking is that you have to pick sides. But there's often more to the story than meets the eye. Life in the wild is harsh, and only the strongest survive. But you can't have a story without a hero. And you can't have a goodie without a baddie. So far, hyenas have had a raw deal. But we're changing that, right? A new clan of hyena lovers. When people tell me they don't like hyenas, one of the reasons they'll often give is the way they look. And sure, a fully grown adult hyena has a few scars. They might be missing an ear or two. But why would you hold that against them? Hyenas' lives are tough, and they have to battle every day to survive. It's a hard, cruel world in the wild, where every day could be your last. Those that survive have been through a lot. And who wouldn't look a little rough around the edges after fighting every day of your life? For me, when I see a hyena weathered by life in the wild, I think those scars are just their story. Maybe it's that way with people too. I hope you've enjoyed our adventure today. In the next video, we'll be following the story of a young hyena cub and some of the challenges she faces as she grows up wild. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you've got any questions about hyenas, please let me know in the comments below. As always, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Stay wild. This little hyena cub has a hard life ahead of her. It's a wild world full of danger. She'll have to learn fast if she's going to survive. Hey team, welcome to another video. If you're new here, I'm Jules. As a wildlife cameraman, I've spent months living alongside hyenas while filming. I've grown to love them, and in this series, I'm showing you why you should too. Today, we'll follow the journey of a young hyena princess as she takes her first steps out into the wild. Let's go. This is the tale of Spotty, the spotted hyena. Lame name, I know. Sorry. Spotty's clan lives on the banks of a lagoon. But this is not the beginning of our story. For that, we need to go back. Two weeks before when I arrived in South Wyango National Park for another filming trip. I'm here to film hyenas and all the other amazing animals that live here. For viewers, documentaries always start with pretty pictures of animals, but for filmmakers like me, it starts with a search. The first step of filming is finding animals, and that can be a real challenge. For me, there's something special about the start of a filming trip. The anticipation, the excitement, it's the start of an adventure. Even though I've spent years in the wild, I still have to adjust to being back there. You have to get your mind into being a part of this landscape reading tracks, listening for alarm calls, watching your back. The first thing you notice is the stillness. Here, time is only dictated by whether the sun is up or down. There's no traffic, no people, but it's not quiet. All around, the bush is alive. When you're looking for hyena cubs, the best place to start is the den. It's like a family home for hyenas. This is where their young cubs grow up, so it's a focal point for the clan. But they'll often maintain a bunch of other smaller dens dotted around the area, like summer cottages. And this is where hyena mothers will give birth, away from prying eyes. Over the years, I've developed a map of all the holes I've found in the ground. Now, that might sound a bit strange, and it looks pretty confusing too, but it's actually a really good way of finding young hyena cubs. 
Mothers often modify holes made by porcupine or warthog into temporary dens to stash their very young cubs. So I can drive around and check all the holes in the ground for tracks or leave camera traps up and see if there's anything living inside. But this time the hyenas have given me the runaround. After a week of searching empty holes, I was ready to give up. Luckily, a friend of mine, Bertram, is a local guide and he saved the day and showed me where the hyena queen had stashed her little princess. For the first few weeks, hyena cubs are black before they develop their yellowish color and spots. So a little cub like this is only a few weeks old. She's totally defenseless and completely reliant on mum. It's a scary world out there, but the den can be a tough place too. Animals living wild attract parasites. Think about what your pet dog would be like after a year or two of no grooming, or a bath. Lice, ticks and other nasty parasites crawl, burrow and scratch constantly. Am I making you itch yet? <laughs> Hyenas are tough, but even they can't handle bed bugs. So when the amount of parasites in the den gets too much, mum will move them. Threats like other predators or rival clans can also trigger a move, as can the presence of a filmmaker like me. So you have to be careful. Hyenas are really good mums, so until they trust you, you have to walk a fine line between being close enough to film, but not so close that you disturb her. When you're filming animals, it's hard not to give them a name. Scientists tend to study a lot of animals, so keeping track of them is really hard. So a hyena might be H317 or something equally personal. Safari guides and camera teams are less traditional and usually do give animals names. It's kind of a natural instinct. You spend so much time with them, you end up thinking of them as characters or friends. A buddy of mine, Simon, works for the National Parks Department, and he accompanied me during filming. He and I wanted to name the young hyena cub Shula, but that means fart in the local language, so it probably wouldn't have made the cut. We decided that Spotty was a good enough name. Spending a lot of time at the den, you get a really good idea of just how many animals pass by. As they grow, hyena cubs have to learn to deal with these residents. Elephant, warthog, and these baboons. And work out which ones are a threat, and which ones they can chase. They haven't worked out they're supposed to be predators yet. Hyena cubs have a lot of learning to do. Not only do they have to learn about the threats from other animals, but they also have to learn how to deal with a very complex social hierarchy. Understanding your rank is one of the most important life lessons a hyena cub has to learn. They do this amazing greeting ceremony when they meet. With a superb sense of smell, they're able to tell who's who and reaffirm rank. Hyena society is matriarchal, which means it's led by females. Cubs are born with the ranks of their mothers. So if you get a raw deal and are born to a low-ranking hyena, life is tough. If you're born to a queen and you're a female cub, you'll outrank all the other hyenas, including the males. Beyonce would be proud. Who runs the world? The process of getting animals used to you is called habituation. When you're filming in areas where there are a lot of tourists, this has often been done already by the guides. But when you're filming baby animals, you have to start from scratch. Over the first few weeks of filming, the cubs gradually get more and more relaxed, and that's when you start getting the good stuff. But sometimes they can take it a little bit far. These cubs are just being curious, chewing my tires, ripping the canvas on my camera mount, and generally being cheeky. They're too close to film here, but now they know I'm not a threat, and that's great. Once they get bored, they'll start ignoring me, and that's just perfect. When hyenas look at you, it's different to other predators. One filmmaker I worked with described it as doughy eyes. Cats like lions and leopards have a hard stare. Hyenas don't. I know I'm probably gonna get trolled by sciencey types here, but hyenas have soft, intelligent eyes more like a puppy. They also do this kind of bobbing thing with their heads when they're curious, like they're trying to figure you out. It can be a bit unnerving at first, especially at night when their eyes reflect, but once you realize that they're just curious, it's really funny to see them bobbing their heads like they're in the club. 
a juvenile hyena has arrived at the den with most of an impala, which they probably scavenged from a leopard. It's an odd move, usually they'd feed elsewhere and bring back small bits of the carcass. Hyenas don't like sharing. This young hyena is a fighter. She's got a broken leg that's mended, but it's still hard to use. If she was low ranking, she'd be dead already, but she's got high status, and that means she's able to use that to her advantage. Usually when we make films, we can put a variety of shots together to make a story work. Here, it was all happening at once, and being the only camera on the scene, I had to try my best to capture it all. Other than a few cuts, you're seeing it unfold in real time. The adults are all fighting for a bit of the carcass. The young injured cub wants her share. You can see how the older hyenas are holding their aggression back. They probably know they can take what they want by force, but there would be consequences. Breaking the rules of the hierarchy is a huge no-no, and hyenas can be vicious when enforcing rank. In the middle of it all, a herd of elephants show up, and a couple of excited hyenas give chase. The young injured cub asserts her rank. She knows mum will back her up. In the end, she gets her way and the dust settles. And life at the den goes back to normal. After a couple of months, Spotty has grown, and she and her den mates are ready to start exploring their world. They start making little forays into the wild, and this is the most dangerous time for them. They could encounter any number of threats along the way. Later in life, hyenas are able to dominate leopards, but at this age, they'd be an easy meal. This wilderness is also home to the Ensefu pride, a pride of lions can bring down prey as large as an elephant. A couple of hyena cubs would make a nice little snack. The cubs are lucky. The lions are sleeping. They're conserving their energy for later, when it's time to hunt. Or until something surprises them. Right now it's too hot to bother with a couple of scrawny cubs, but after dark it might be another story. With nowhere to be and no one to tell them what to do, the cubs meander, checking out anything that catches their attention. It's getting late now and Spotty is still very far from the den. She'll be crossing lion country in the dead of night, and the Ensefu pride? is on the hunt. The lions are feeding close to the hyena den. Thermal cameras allow us to film in the dead of night. My mate Neil was filming when the Ensefu pride and our hyena clan clashed. The hyena adults push in to try and fight for the kill. All hell breaks loose. Let's just pause here a minute. Scenes like this are difficult to watch, but you have to try not to pick sides. On the one hand, the lions have hungry mouths to feed, but on the other, the hyenas can't let the lions get too comfortable, or Spotty and the other cubs could be in danger. It's like a schoolyard fight, where you're friends with both sides, but here, you can't just step in and break it up. One of the hardest things for a filmmaker is to remain on the outside and let animals just be animals. In the morning, all is quiet at the den and it's easy to assume the worst. But a familiar face is a sight for sore eyes. Spotty is okay and she'll have learnt a good lesson about life in the wild. The cubs are in a playful mood and they've got energy to burn. <laughs> the 
For Spotty, this is only the start of a life full of adventure. Hyenas go through so much. Fighting with lions, dodging angry hippos. Every day is a new challenge. I hope I've given you a glimpse into what makes them so special. From their time as adorable little cubs, to fierce encounters with rival predators. You've seen how they've been misrepresented, miscast, and misunderstood. Hopefully, you've fallen in love with them. And with any luck, that's made you care about them too. We're going to be doing a follow-up episode, where we'll answer any questions about hyenas you might still have. And we'll let you know ways in which you can get involved in their conservation. We'll be looking at some of the human-created threats that hyenas face, and hearing from some of the people who have made it their life's mission to protect them. People I'm lucky to count as friends. We'll be premiering that episode, so if you're interested, you can watch with us. To do that, make sure you've subscribed and turn your notifications on. And if there's anything you want to know about hyenas, just let us know. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you learned, or shoot us a DM on Instagram. We'd love to know what you think. I hope you've enjoyed our adventure together. Thanks so much for joining me, and until next time, stay wild.